What's going on guys? We are back with the Cummins and uh, as you can see we got it at the house now and it has nothing on the bed which I think looks a whole lot better than it did before. All right, so today what we're gonna do on the 89 to 90, uh, 90 and a half or 91, I can't remember, um, on all the non-intercooled trucks, uh, they had different vacuum pumps. Um, on the intercooled trucks and even the second gen tw uh, 12 valves, they have the Hydro Boost pumps. Well, these have a little bit different. So as you can see down here, um, it has these two vacuum diaphragms. One here is on the side and the other one's on the bottom. And attached to this pump is a power steering pump. And we're having a little bit of problem with both, but we're not getting any vacuum whatsoever from the vacuum pump. So what we're gonna do, uh, we ordered, these are really hard to find parts for, but I did, did find the, uh, the diaphragms online. So uh, I got two of them and you can do it with it on the truck, but I, I'm gonna take it off just cause it's a little bit easier to work on. So uh, what we're gonna have to undo, there's two vacuum lines that come to this thing. They go, there's one from this vacuum pod and then one right down there. They all go into this one hose that goes all the way up here to the brake booster. So what we're gonna do is I've already loosened some of these hose clamps, so. Move that up. One line. We got that done. Now what we have to do is take off our power steering lines. So for that, so there's just gonna be two power steering lines. One is right here and the other, the return is right here. This is gonna be a higher pressure, the one with the, uh, the bolt. And then we'll just get some pliers and get this little clamp off and we can just slide this off. And then after that, we'll get this bolt here and then additionally, there's another bolt there on the bottom, which it's gonna be a little tricky to get to, but I think we'll be able to do it with an extension. All right, so we have the lines pulled off. I actually had to cut this return line uh, because it was just, it had never been taken off of here. And so it was just kind of formed on there. It wouldn't come off. So I had to cut it with a razor blade, so that's okay. And then uh, this other line is the high pressure line right here and it screws into the back. If you can see it right here and behind there is a spool valve that sometimes can stick and can cause this power steering pump to throw fluid out the top and you know make for really hard steering which I have right now so while we have it out I'm gonna go ahead and check that but um, the tube that actually hold this whole assembly into the uh, to the timing case here on the engine uh, one bolt up here and then the other bolt is down on the bottom, which I, I would try to show you, but I, I can't even show you. So if you see how this is kind of clocked just a little bit here to the left, it's just going to be straight down. You'll see when I get it off. Uh, so just get under there and you're going to have to crawl up under there. I suggest you do it. Don't do it like I did. Um, do it before you take these lines off because uh, uh, you'll have power steering fluid all in your face. So I did get it broke loose down there. I used from underneath, I used a wobble on a, uh, uh, a short 15 millimeter socket so I broke it loose and I was just after I broke it loose actually I was out uh, I was able to pull the whole uh, bolt out with my hand so this one's broke loose too um, I'm gonna have to use two hands but I'll see if I can set the camera up somewhere while I do this There we go. Uh, you can actually see into the timing case right here. And the gear looks good. That's good. Uh, don't worry if you have a little bit of oil on the out or when you take that pump off around where it mates, just cause I mean, it engine oil lubricates that gear down there. So that's no big deal, but let's show the, let's show you the pump. So here's the pump and you can see how, what I mean by the housing, the, uh, that bottom bolt is just going to be on the opposite side. So you just kind of got to 
look for it just a little bit. Sorry I had you tilted there, but yeah, so this is gonna be our pump. And what should happen, when you turn this, you should be able to hear it sucking air in and out, which it is not doing at all, neither of them. So what they sell, like I said, they sell these vacuum pods and I have two on order. Looks like these little bolts just come out, come out down here, these little nuts, four on each side and it should pop right off. Now underneath there, there are uh, push rods. So we'll check on those and uh, make sure those are in order. But, uh, and until then, oh, and another thing, I don't think you can see it. Um, these ball bearings like to go, um, but it looks like these bearings are actually good because I can see them. Uh, sometimes this bearing will be wrecked and that's not good because if those bearings are wrecked, then uh, you wreck this gear and wreck your camshaft and it can do a lot more damage than even the killer dial pin on these. Let's see if you can see. I can see those ball bearings right there. You probably aren't going to be able to. But they all look good. Alright, so we're going to spray this up a little bit. Try to clean it up and then get it over in the shop. Uh, where we will break it down. Well, whenever the parts get in, we're going to break it down. So we're here on the bench and so what we're going to do is we're going to take out the spool. Um, it's the next day and we still haven't got these uh, uh, vacuum diaphragms in yet. They said the uh, the truck that the parts were on had a wreck on the way to O'Reilly's and uh, they didn't know when it was going to be in. So hopefully sometime today, I don't know. But in the meantime, we're going to see if we can fix our hard power steering issue. Um, what happens is a lot of times uh, behind this big uh not right here this is a high pressure line where the high pressure line screws in but you can take this off and behind there there is a spool and a spring and that can sometimes get stuck if that spool gets stuck then uh yeah then you're not going to have any power steering so an easy way to do it is just unscrew it and behind it we'll see if it should spring out because there's a spring behind it if not if it's stuck we'll get it unstuck and see if that fixes our problem uh, first i'm going to try to clean up some of this stuff because it's really dirty all right, the spool is going to be pretty, to get this uh, big nut off, it's going to be a 1 and 1 16. So it's going to be pretty big, 3 quarter inch drive. short work of that so it seems that spool valve was stuck um, it's moving freely now so um, I don't know that's the first time I've messed with that, so uh, we'll we'll put it back together and and see what happens. All right, so here's the <clears throat> here's a spool valve. Okay, so I'm not gonna pretend like I know how it works. <laughs> All I know is that this uh, this piston rides on the spring, and uh, based on the flow, it can reduce or increase the flow. But sometimes this valve will get stuck, and uh, yeah, you, you can't build any pressure, and then you won't be able to steer your or you won't have any power steering. They were saying take this out. See if it's stuck, free it up, put it all back together and see if it works. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So it's spring and then your piston. Make sure everything rides on there like it should. And magnets help out a lot with this. Inspect. There is an O-ring right here. Um, I don't have it, so we're just going to clean it up real good. Still looks all intact, doesn't look all mangled. And put it back together. Alright, so. Screw that back on. We are not going to use the impact to get this back on. 
There is probably a torque value for this. However, I do not know the torque value. So we're just going to put it reasonably tight. All right, so now we wait for our vacuum diaphragms. In the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, see what uh, see what size wrench we're going to need for this. All right, so these are going to be ten millimeters. vacuum diaphragm, vacuum pods, whatever you want to call them. And here, of course, we have the vacuum pump and the power steering pump. So both of these have the same thing in them. So we'll just open up one for now. And this looks like it. It even comes with the, with the new O-ring. That's what I was, I was kind of wondering if it was going to. So good news. So it's pretty easy, uh, it just bolts on here with four nuts and bolts right here. It has kind of an oblong bearing on it, so when it spins, it's almost like a cam and uh, it pushes on the push rods here and creates vacuum. So let's get these four nuts off and uh, replace one of these and we'll do the other. So this is going to be a 10 millimeter. Here's the old one. Let me get a pick and get this old O-ring out of here. I'll try not to let any dirt in either. There is plenty of it. These face to the engine just like before. Find the nuts that go on the end of this. All right, and just just a little heads up. Some of these are a little finicky to get to, so it's just it's mainly tedious. It's not hard and also don't tighten one end down without starting the other you know kind of going across pattern because that push rod is stiff and it'll kind of slant it if you tighten this side down this side will pull up away from the uh, away from the pump itself and you don't want that so you don't bend anything all right one down two to go All we got to do is throw it back on the truck. The vacuum pump is back on the truck. Uh, it's the way it goes on. It's pretty easy. Uh, just make sure that you know these uh, vacuum diaphragms can go on either way. Um, so just make sure they are turned where you can get the vacuum hoses on them easily. This other one, uh, I, I had turned the opposite way than how it came off, but no big deal. I just had to uh, route the vacuum line going the other way. It, and it's still fit. All right, another thing I did, and if you'll remember, the original alternator was locked up on this truck. That was in one of the first videos or so. Uh, so we took it off, and I had just gotten this one from a, a member on a Facebook group for first gens. Um, he was real awesome, just uh, <laughs> said cover shipping and it's yours. Uh, had no clue if it worked. And honestly, I really didn't care if it worked or not. I just wanted something that wouldn't froze up so I could run the belt and uh, you know, I could have the water pump and all that good stuff. So, um, I had not hooked it up 
because I didn't know what wires had been messed with in this truck or whatever. So anyway, I went and hooked everything up like it should be. All the terminals are on there. You have your two that go on the back of the alternator and then your ground right here and the big wire down there that runs straight to the battery. Now this does still have the uh, uh, voltage regulator, which uh, has, is notorious for not working and going out. So who knows if that works or if that was messed with or whatever. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, we'll try it and see what happens. Also, see that little gem right there. And I haven't hooked up the boost yet. It's right here because they decided to put it behind the injector lines and the throttle. Uh, all the throttle assembly right there. So I'm not I'm not going to pull that off right now. But I did put the gauges in. I'll let you have a peek right now. But with the ISPRO uh, EV2s. And let me tell you, they are very nice. Um, the pyrometer and the trans temp are both electric. And then you have the boost gauge, which is manual. All right, now what I want to do, just to see if we're charging, take my uh, voltmeter right here. We're going to measure our volts right now, and then measure them again while the engine is running. So 12.5 volts, pretty spot on for a, a good battery with no load on it at the time. So let's go ahead and start this thing up and uh, see if we get power brakes back and uh, see if we're charging. So mind you, we haven't started this truck since we pulled this off about three days ago. So definitely a cold start. Not that cold. It's about 50 degrees out right now. Well, we do have a wait to start light. I was kind of surprised. Oh yeah, and my nose feel good too. And the transmission has shifted perfectly. All right, well that makes me feel a lot better. That's actually a big, uh, big step and a big hurdle to overcome. Now let's go check the. Uh, Let's go check on that alternator. Whoa, 14.4, wow, it is charging. And it's charging at the rate it should be too. That's not overcharged or undercharged, that is 100% perfect. One thing we still have to work on is power steering because it's still really sluggish and uh, and really tough to turn. All right, y'all. Uh, you know, at this point, we're insured. We're uh, we're registered, and th I, I, this truck is ready to get on the road for me. Um, the only thing I need to do is brand new tires, and then we'll really be good to go because those these tires have seen better days, and I, I wouldn't trust them on the highway at all. Uh, so before before we get out there and, and do anything on the road, change some new tires, but other than that, this thing is looking good. We also changed the headlight. I can't remember if I showed you that or not, but that makes a big difference, I think. It looks a lot better. And this whole truck is just looking a lot better. I'm, I'm really, really impressed with how it's coming along and it's uh, it's about to be on the road. We're we went from something that had had sat for 15 years, and you wouldn't even think about driving it on the road. To now, I'm I'm considering maybe doing a uh, <laughs> a small trip in this truck and seeing how it see how it goes. Uh, cleaning out that tank really did a huge uh, difference on how this thing runs. 
uh, because as you can see that, that that thing fired right off no cranking hardly at all i think it started on maybe half a crank all right y'all we're gonna end this video right here if you're having problems with your first gen vacuum pump um and if you have it uh, non-intercooled 89 to 91 and a half i believe uh, try changing those vacuum diaphragms if you don't want to go ahead and spend all the big bucks for the conversion over to the hydro boost um, because like i said it, it was less than a couple hundred bucks for those both of those vacuum pods and uh, just bolts right on and now i have all my vacuum operated stuff back uh, i did check the uh, uh the ac controls those are now working from vent to defrost because that's vacuum actuated as well so uh, now that we have vacuum back that's working too so overall i'm very impressed with the uh the doorman uh vacuum diaphragms and yeah very impressed with this truck all together i appreciate y'all watching if you do have any questions drop them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them um and don't forget to subscribe too because we have plenty more coming with this truck and just everything else we have going on we have uh, fishing boats as always uh outboards so uh but there's gonna be a lot more to come on this truck especially since we have it as far as we have now we can start getting into some goodies and all that stuff anyway hit that subscribe button hit the like button thanks for watching i will see y'all soon